please note that all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and you can ask your questions after the presentation if you need assistance during the call please press star then zero on your touchstone phone to reach the operator we have with us mr sandeep sangwan managing director castrol india limited and mr deepesh bakshi cfo and whole time director castrol india limited i now hand over the conference to mr sangwan thank you and over to you hi thanks uh, uh, good afternoon everyone and thank you for attending castrol india's uh, second quarter 2023 earnings call i hope you and your family are doing well uh we pleased to share that castrol india limited delivered strong growth in the second quarter of 23 uh i'd also like to remind you that we follow the jan to december calendar year for our reporting uh we focused on achieving growth uh, both through volume and top line uh, revenue growth and despite challenges i think we've done a, a good job and we are very happy with the second quarter performance showing resilience and innovation in products and services and we'll cover that uh, a bit later in the uh call uh, to begin with uh, let me invite dipesh or uh, cfo to take you through second quarter numbers and financial performance in detail and he'll also then take the opportunity to share with you how the first half of this year has been so dipesh over to you thank you sandeep uh, good afternoon all of you we announced our 2q uh, results this uh, yesterday afternoon and here are some key financial highlights In the second quarter of 2023 we reported strong financial performance our revenue from operation was uh, 1334 crores which is up 7% compared to 2Q 2022 and it's also up 3% compared to the sequential quarter of 1Q 2023 profit before tax was 305 crores a gain of 9% compared to 280 crores in 2Q 2022 and 6% higher than 1Q 2023 sequential quarter. This resulted in delivering a strong performance in 1H also ending 30th June 2023. During this period, we registered revenue from operations of 2628 crores, achieving a growth of 6% compared to 1H 2022. And PBT for the first half of 2023 stood at 593 crores, marking a growth of 0.4% versus 591 crores in 1H of 2022. the board of directors have declared an interim dividend of 3 rupees per share which will be paid on or before 31st august 2023 with confidence we move ahead expecting continued growth and impact into the end of the year 2023 operator request has been initiated if you'd like to cancel this request please press star zero again i think apart from the financial performance i'd like to draw your attention to some of the key business uh, developments at cil uh first is we expanded our portfolio by entering the auto care segment with a variety of products in may uh this reaffirms our promise to offer superior service satisfaction to vehicle owners and this quarter we we plan to leverage our extensive network of distributors modern trade partners e-commerce channels and castrol auto service outlets and bike points to reach uh, consumers with this offering we also successfully launched castrol crb essential a five product variant range uh, of affordable commercial uh, vehicle engine oils to cater to different specifications to win in the suv market which is almost kind of uh, of 50% of the new car sales we launched magnatech suv 5w30 a premium full synthetic offering which has gained a great response from our customers already then pursuant to a june 23 agreement with mahindra insurance brokers limited Castrol Auto Service multi-brand passenger car workshops have an option to be empaneled as distributors of eligible insurance policies from top motor insurance providers through uh, Mahindra Insurance Brokers Limited. The workshops can now potentially offer automotive uh, insurance products digitally alongside repair and maintenance services for their customers' vehicles. By the end of the first half, uh, we've already established a network of over five and a half thousand Castrol bike points and 350 Castrol auto service outlets. In the second half, we aim to reinforce our position in the after-sales service market, committed to enhancing our presence and providing exceptional service to our valued customers. 
pursuant to alliances with OEMs for supply of uh, EV fluids, we launched Castrol on EV transmission fluids and uh, other relevant fluids for EVs for the aftermarket earlier this year. Consumers can now buy the product on e-commerce platforms. Additionally, we are conducting ASDC certified EV readiness trainings to make car and bike mechanics in India EV ready. Until now, we have trained 200 mechanics across India and in third quarter, we expect to further increase that number uh, uh, through providing more trainings. And this will help us strengthen our market position going forward as well. At the same time, we do all this while keeping our focus on sustainability. Uh, we continue to explore raw material optionality to reduce carbon footprint. And our three state-of-the-art plants uh, in Pahadpur, Patal Ganga, uh, and Silvasa continue to perform well uh, with a capacity of about 160 million liters uh, uh, for uh, uh, lubricants. I think as a part of our Castor's Global Path 360 uh, sustainability agenda, uh, we moved our Patal Ganga plant uh, to 100% renewable uh, energy electricity now, and the plant is procuring this green electricity directly from the grid. Uh, the plant also won prestigious award for industrial health and safety practices uh, by the government of Maharashtra, and occupational health and safety award, uh, the Golden Peacock Award. The Pahadpur plant was also awarded gold award for plant efficiency category by Apex India F Foundation. And on that note, I'd like to thank you for your attention and would like to open the session for your questions, feedback, and views, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you wish to ask a question, please press star and one on your touchdown telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Also, in lieu of time, we will stick to two questions per person. If you have further questions, kindly rejoin the queue. Ladies and gentlemen, let us wait for a moment while the questions come in. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Swetcha from ANS Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, thank you for giving this opportunity. So I had two questions. Uh, first was, uh, you know, you said the revenue growth was 7% YOY. Uh, how much of this was the volume growth? If you could give me, uh, you know, the volume growth numbers, YOY and, uh, you know, sequential also. And the second question was, if you could give me a breakup uh, uh, of, you know, how much revenue was generated from EV fluids uh, in this quarter and... Uh, you know, previous quarter, that would be helpful. Yeah, the patient wants to take that, so. Yeah, so, um, first question, uh, in terms of the uh, volume growth, I think, you know, we, we grew volume, uh, we had about 58 million liters this, this quarter, versus uh, 55 million liters the previous quarter. Um, in terms of the uh, growth on volumes, we were about 20% uh, growth has come from uh, volume. In terms of the EV fluid, I think it's too early to really uh, share with you the numbers. As you know, the EV market is effectively uh, very nascent stage. And uh, the percentage of uh, EV sales itself in, in motor cars is um, at, a, at, at a single digit in terms of the total car sales. So very early stage in terms of, so it's you know, very difficult to give you the number at this stage. Okay, okay. So if you could just to follow up on this, so if you could give a broader outline as to you know, how do we see this 
uh, EV fluids uh, contributing to our revenues, say, going down two or three years down the line, or maybe six, four to six quarters down the line, you know, what percentage of revenue, uh, you know, uh, this, this can become, you know, at a later stage? I, I think if you're looking at the next uh, five to six quarters, the, the contribution of EV flow is going to stay uh, relatively very, very uh, small because I think uh, uh, given the low penetration of cars in India, a lot of uh, consumer demand is still being fulfilled by ICE uh, vehicles and I, we expect that the lubricants market for a, even for a medium to uh, long term will continue to stay robust still uh, well into the uh, 2035, 2040. So I think in the next few quarters, uh, the contribution of EV fluids is going to be very small. But what we are making sure is that all the relevant products are available for EV vehicles to our customers. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Sabri Hazarika from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So two questions. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, I mean, your commentary in the press release was quite optimistic in terms of uh, the outlook for uh, for the market as well as the growth outlook for this year. Uh, so what do you think uh, is happening uh, in the market uh, and uh, and what do you think, how, how would that pan out in terms of uh, your overall growth uh, for, the, for the year? Yeah, so Sabri, I think uh, I'd like to answer that uh, in two respects. So first of all, uh, the lubricant market is growing, okay, we, and we expect the total volumes and uh, value to grow in this year. Could be in the range of about like anywhere from uh, five to seven percent, uh, but uh, we quite optimistic on demand growth in the lubricants category. Point number one. Second is, if you remember last year, uh, there was a lot of uh, inflation, a lot of cost pressures, and we had to take um, uh, multiple price increases to protect our margins. And I think those cost, in, and as a result of that, the volumes in the second half of last year were uh, uh, were impacted or under pressure. And with cost inflation having uh, uh, eased out now, we expect the, the volume to uh, start growing again, and that's uh, one of our focus areas. And we, we operate a strategic pricing framework and we'll continue to take pricing actions uh, so that we continue uh, keep giving good value to our consumers and customers. So, so hopefully, uh, uh, if the uh, if the inflation stays, uh, uh, cost uh, uh, raw material input inflation stays at levels where we see now, uh, we're quite optimistic on demand in the uh, second half of this year. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Sawmill Shah from Paris Investments. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Congratul congratulations on good numbers. So, so my question was similar to the previous participant that, uh, you know, I want to understand on the EV space basically. So what would be our revenue per vehicle on the EV side? See, I do understand EV is still at a nascent stage, but if we compare with, say, internal uh, combustion engine per vehicle content versus per vehicle content on EV side. So just wanted your outlook on the same. Yeah, so, so I think uh, uh, on EVs, uh, le uh, consume less fluid as compared to uh, ICE because EVs don't need any engine oils, okay? But uh, the technology is still developing, and depending on how the technology develops, uh, uh, will also, because, for example, uh, there's a higher need of thermal management in uh, batteries for e electric vehicles, and, uh, uh, and that may consume fluid. So, again, it's a function of time. At the same time, as a company, we're also kind of uh, uh, entering into new areas, uh, things like auto care that I've spoken about to uh, to uh, make sure that uh, we are uh, expanding to areas beyond lubricants. But to, just to give you the reassurance, we expect the lubricants market to continue growing into 2040. Okay, so while the EV uh, EVs will uh, grow in the future. Uh, we don't see an immediate uh, impact or even in the medium term uh, uh, from a business perspective. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, that's it from my side, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a next question from the line of Pratik Poddar from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. 
your yeah, hypo just some of two questions one is if you could just talk a bit about the replacement life cycle of this uh, ev flu the transmission ev flu so normally the ev flu is tend to be filled for life the the uh, it's uh, the replacement cycles are not uh, 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 not something like engine oil which you uh, need to service every uh, few months or every 10000 kilometers or so uh, but technology is still evolving as i said nobody has all the answers so uh, but typically they tend to be full for life and, and and the realizations would they be substantially higher than uh, like to like brickets or they are lower yeah the realizations because it's a different technology uh tend to be uh, slightly on the higher side okay but it's a very small uh, small number or small volume right now so got it got it and then last question for on castrol auto service outlets these are franchise outlets right just wanted to yeah absolute uh, these are outlets where, where we don't own the asset these are outlets where we provide branding support we provide training support and we provide certification and these outlets primarily you use cash on lubricants so that consumers can get quality assurance service and it is via this network that you are introducing other car care products also right no no so we introducing that product in all the outlets that we cover so we today we cover almost about 100000 plus outlets so uh, we'll uh, we'll sell these products in uh, whichever channel is relevant for these products thank you We have a next question from the line of Hamel, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you uh, for taking my question. So, as I see, you know, if you see 2016, 19 area, you know, our EBITDA margin range used to be 27 to 30, and going forward, I mean, because of maybe competitive intensity, we, our margin is now we are guiding towards 23, and strategic pricing that you've been mentioning. If the industry is growing. Are we to expect, if you take three, four year view, that the competitive intensity or the product mix that you are selling, is it going to lead to a bit of margin compression further, or is it this is where you believe it will normalize uh, for the next three, four years? Yeah, assuming the raw materials, uh, uh, you know, uh, don't move a lot, uh, and assuming last year was a one off. So, Hemant, uh, I'll answer a part of that question, and then I'll hand over to Dipesh. So, first thing is we are a premium branded lubricant player in the market, okay? And personal mobility is a key focus area for us. So, I think uh, uh, we will continue investing behind our brands, uh, and that's been one of the hallmarks of Castrol, uh, which enables us to uh, to command premiums in the market, and uh, we're not shift, making any shift in that uh, thinking. and i think as uh, personal mobility vehicle ownership grows uh, that will also play to advantage uh, in terms of protecting our margins so uh, from a margin compression perspective no i don't see a margin uh, compression happening in our business in the next few years because we will continue to be a, a branded player and on the cost side also we keep working on formulations to improve our uh, formulations and improve our uh, cost profile So that's the broad shape uh, that we have in mind. But the pitch, uh, if you'd like to add to this, so yeah, no, thanks, Sandeep. So the only thing I would add is uh, that the range of the EBITDA margin you spoke about, 26 percent or plus minus. I think we've already shifted, you know, shifted that by giving a range which is 23 to 27, right? So looking, and that was more from a point of view of than looking at three, five year forward view. Yeah. So. if i turn the question differently the compression is then already factored in into that new range that we are given and we are operating that so i we don't see really it going below 23% uh see i mean you know there will be a or year where you know there is a huge pressure on input cost etc but that might be a temporary blip uh the mix as well of the various uh, products offering that we do and you know recently you must have seen also in the press release Uh, we regularly come up with new products which are technologically advanced and fit for purpose for our consumer so the price uh, pricing that sandeep was talking about you know we always want to help the consumers get the best value for money as well so keeping all of this consideration in mind uh, uh, 23 to 25 26% is the range we would like to operate in thank you that's that's it for me appreciate thank you thank you We have a next question from the line of Gaurav Nigam from Tonga Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you for taking my question. 
I just wanted to understand the uh, uh, perspective since Castrol is a global company, sir. Uh, and India, now I completely understand, may not see a EV transition in uh, near future. But globally, as com- uh, like uh, geography, the transitioning to EVs, how is the revenue profile of uh, uh, lubricant companies changing globally? Uh, any learnings that you can share from your global experience? <laughs> So I think uh, we continue working with all the uh, big OEMs globally in terms of development of EV fluids for uh, for their vehicles, and uh, and I think uh, there's a lot of investment going into into that area. For example, uh, BP, which is our parent company, announced a 50 million pound investment uh, in thermal management of batteries and EV charging uh, uh, last year at Castrol headquarters in UK. Uh, so that is one. Uh, from a, a revenue perspective, from a growth perspective, I think uh, uh, while uh, the Western world is seeing the uh, 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 accelerated kind of uh, adoption of electric vehicles, there are opportunities in uh, emerging markets such as India, South Asia, where I think the car park, ice car park is still going, uh, growing. So we see uh, globally that uh, balancing out. And then we are also looking at additional opportunities. For example, one of the areas that Castrol globally is, uh, uh, has called out is uh, around thermal management of uh, uh, data centers as an opportunity area from a, a fluids perspective. So we are looking at all the options, and I think uh, Castrol has been in business for 100 plus years, and we want to continue mm-hmm. being in the business for the next 100 years. So. Got it. Got it. Sir. Thank you. Really appreciate. Uh, sir, one uh, uh, another question. Uh, can you directionally indicate what is our revenue proportion from non two wheeler and uh, PV segments? I mean, more CV and farm and all the other segments put together. Can you give so, so uh, kind of personal mobility accounts almost for about uh, 45 percent uh, of our uh, 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 revenues. Uh, commercial vehicles are account for another kind of uh, 40 odd percent. Yeah. And uh, 35 to 40 percent. So, so basically, that's the uh, the split. Okay, and then then you have balance of the industrial fluid. So, so if you take uh, roughly in the range of uh, broadly, you can say 45, 40, and another 15 uh, from uh, industrial. That's that's the broad shape. Samir Dalal from Natwarlal and Sons Stock Brokers. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. So my question actually to some extent has been answered. It was on the compet- uh, com- uh, the competitive intensity that is there in the market. Uh, you know, we are talking of maybe as yes, the next few many years, India will continue to grow in the uh, ICE business. I mean, because the number of cars being sold is increasing and EV is still a very, very small component. So I want to know how you would be able to capture more of the market share going forward apart from just pricing uh, I mean, you talked a bit about the fact that you're doing this tie-up for branding, for servicing and all, but what are the other steps that probably you could take to ensure that you keep your uh, lead in the market going forward? So, so I think, uh, first of all, is around innovation, making sure that we are offering consumers latest products with latest specifications as the market evolves. So, for example, if you've seen the cars market, which used to be a 10W viscosity now, has shifted to a 5W viscosity as the, as the premium viscosity. And in the last quarter, we introduced a product uh, called uh, Magnatec SUV. Uh, 530. So one uh, area uh, where we uh, where we've always been very active and will continue to be active is product innovation and uh, g- giving uh, uh, good quality products to our consumers. That's uh, that's one area. The second is, I think as the uh, as the demand evolves uh, on passenger cars, uh, which are going to uh, going to grow much faster as compared to two wheelers or uh, commercial vehicles. We have a whole range of products and we leverage our global technology centers because what has happened in uh, Europe, let's say four or five years ago, is happening in India now from a technology perspective. And we have access to all those uh, uh, products and offerings from our, uh, 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 being part of the global uh, multinational organization. Uh, the second is we're looking at distribution expansion opportunities. Okay, uh, so we're looking at rural uh, as a growth opportunity area where we want to uh, uh, to be focused. 
we are making investments uh, uh, beyond. So last year we uh, invested in a company called Team Mobility Solutions, which is a digital aftermarket player, which is a part of the TVS group. And we uh, took a, a 7% stake in that company. Uh, we closed the transaction in Jan. We're quite happy with the progress because they're also, uh, they have spare parts business, they have a network. Uh, uh, so I think that's the broad shape of things uh, that we're looking at. And we also see uh, uh, opportunities in the industrial space. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to participants to press star and one to ask a question. We have our next question from the line of Bharat Shet from Quest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. So you spoke about uh, uh, expanding our network with uh, like uh, what stakes we have taken as well as his auto care and setting up a various uh, service centers. So how much, I mean, sales we are really able to generate out of this alternate channel that we are looking, and how do we see this from three to five years perspective that really start contributing in meaningful, meaningful way? So I think it's very difficult to give you a broad uh, uh, a split of how much do we sell to a, a branded workshop channel. But we do have the numbers, but I think that's something uh, data from a competitive perspective we don't share uh, very openly. Okay. Fair. But, uh, yeah. But it's, uh, uh, you can uh, give qualitatively how do we really... Uh, passenger car uh, workshops, okay. And that's why we're interested in uh, uh, investing in companies such as Key Mobility or building a network. And we'll continue focusing on that uh, because having a workshop offer gives a much better share uh, to us in the marketplace. But I think uh, uh, for competitive reason, I won't be able to share exact splits of these uh, volumes of revenue from these channels. No, I don't want, but qualitatively, if you can give them color, key, it will how it will grow over uh, the existing channel uh, that we lo really look like. So, so I think the cars market is growing, and uh, that's uh, that's an area where we want, want to participate in. We have a leading share in the car space. Uh, we'll continue focusing on that, uh, both from a retail and independent workshop perspective. Uh, I, I don't know what else can I say. We we have a good share in all the spaces. Our uh, market shares are in the range of uh, in the retail automotive aftermarket as measured by Nielsen, say in the range of about 20 odd percent, and uh, that's what uh, we want to continue protecting and growing. And I mean, I may just build, you know, uh, these are service and maintenance workshop, right? So as Key Mobility expands their network from X number of workshops to, you know, uh, Y over the next few years, you know, the, the multiplier effect comes on to us as well. By the way, uh, there is... Uh, and whatever possibility is there on EVs, spares, repairs, you know, they play in all of that. It's just not ICE engine. So with, with this investment, I think we, we do have access to, to that as well. So I think the alliance that we have with them or the mistake that we have taken is a strategic investment. And, um, you know, we, we are working with them not only on this, but many other opportunities, you know, which obviously, you know, as part of uh, being a strategic partner, we get access to, uh, and it can range not only just from service and maintenance, but to other aspects of adjacencies as well. I mean, I think that's the best I can give you uh, in terms of the flavor of what this is all about. You know, this is a long-term investment from a point of view of uh, collaborating with them and, you know, uh, leveraging on each other's benefits and advantages. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Vipul Shah from Sumangal Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Are we charging uh, this uh, Casco branded uh, franchising workshop any fee for using our name? So, uh, you mean to say any yeah. franchisee fees or something? Yeah, from Casco yeah. Service. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that's something that uh, is. Uh, I wouldn't like to comment on that. Let, let me say say that we will hold our comments. But I think our primary focus is to make sure that consumers get quality service through Castrol lubricants, and that's that's the intent. 
to the uh, why i was asking means is there any meaningful contribution from that area yeah so in these workshops primarily castrol lubricants get sold so typically let's say my share in the uh, and i'm just not quoting any number let's say if the share is 30% 40% 20% in these branded workshops you get a much higher share of uh, lubricant usage and that's that's where we, uh, we drive value uh, value from okay so thanks thank you we have a next question from the line of dhawal shah from girik capital please go ahead mr dhawal shah your line is unmuted please go ahead with your question since there is no response we'll move on to the next participant before that participants may please press star and 1 to ask a question we have a question from the line of hitain borija from sequin investments please go ahead hello thank you for the opportunity sir so i have one uh, question on the auto care business as you mentioned we are like uh, making a portfolio in this uh, segment so just wanted to understand what is the current revenue what kind of market this is and uh, just want to understand the flavor in this segment like how is the revenue we are looking for next 3 to 5 years in this segment yeah so i think uh, we just launched the range in may so it's very early days right, in terms of how much revenue uh, will it contribute i think uh, first of all uh, we'll come up with a range of five products as i said and mm-hmm. uh, there is a very unorganized sector right now and you have many many small players and i think our intent is to uh, to give branded offerings in this market so uh, mm-hmm. it's a good growth prospects how much will it be time will tell uh, very early days uh, i would say so any ballpark number on the market size of this products oh, very difficult to estimate okay uh, i i think we see as a good uh, good opportunity that's why we went to this market you have big other players in the market 3m operates in this space you have uh, pidlight in this space which are the other players so so we see opportunities and that's why uh, we decide to enter this uh, segment okay okay so just to conclude currently this market is driven by the on organized and small players right yeah there there many local players is kind of getting organized so so uh, we'll continue kind of uh, making sure that we uh, adding offerings and uh, uh and uh, keep working in this area sir and sir these products are also sold in the franchises type of model which we are currently trying to do with the yes outlet yeah yes yes okay okay sir yeah thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question please press star and 1 on your phone now We have a question from the line of Mayank Maheshwari from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thank you for the call, sir. Uh, just a bit more on industry question, especially on the cost side. Uh, can you just talk a bit around uh, how you're seeing the demand supply evolve on Group Three uh, lubricants as well as on the Group One side? Is if you can give us some flavor of what's going on in the market there. So, so i think uh, first of all uh, we have uh, good global sourcing the uh, uh, sourcing contracts which kind of give us a play in the market i, I think uh, we've seen uh, deflation coming through in uh, group 1 group 2 and across uh, all the base oil uh, formats and and i think uh, uh, hopefully we'll see stability in the prices going to the second half that's all that i can say i i, I think it'll be uh it will not be right for me to comment on our sourcing strategy and how we uh, source base oils okay thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of swetcha from ans wealth please go ahead uh hi sir uh, this is a follow up uh, so like you said we just started the auto care in uh, may so uh, could you give some more details as to you know what products are we uh, targeting in auto care and how do we plan to scale it up yeah yeah sure well, so so i think uh, the products that we kind of launched now are products such as uh, 
there's an anti rust product, there's a chain loop protector, there's a chain loop grease which is used by two wheelers, there's a uh, wax which is uh, a shine uh, product. So basically, the proposition we have is we protect your vehicles from inside and outside because Castrol has been protecting engines for the last 100 years. And that's why we decided to extend this race to also uh, body care for uh, automotive uh, uh, vehicles. And I think uh, if I look at the portfolio, uh, auto care range is a, a vast range of products with multiple offerings from various players. And our intent is every uh, every six months or so, we'll keep enhancing this uh, product range offering uh, for the consumers. Okay. okay. So, so are we also looking at, like when you say body care, something like as a protection film, you know, that normally cars have it? Are we also looking uh, on those lines? So, uh, I, I think we're looking at all the opportunities available in this category, and we're not close to or uh, uh, to anything uh, which will add value to the business. Okay. And so, the second follow-up, uh, if you could give me the volume, uh, you know, uh, that was in Q2 of last year, sir. So, you gave me 58 million liters this Q2. Could you give me this number for last quarter, Q2? In Q2 2023. 22. Uh, sorry, 2022. Yeah. Yes. So 2022, we did 56 million liter last year. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a question from the line of Soumil Shah from Paris Investments. Please go ahead. So thanks for allow, allowing me for a follow up question. Uh, can you share with us uh, revenue contribution from key mobility, uh, the EBITDA margin for the same, and uh, what growth can we expect going forward? Yeah, I think uh, it's too early to, you know, give any numbers at this stage. We in, we completed a transaction only in January, and um, like we have said earlier. You know, the intent of this is to have uh, Castrol in their workshops and uh, we're looking at various other synergies and opportunities uh, in both the uh, both sides of the workshops to leverage the benefit that we have in terms of the strategic uh, stakes that we hold. But frankly, too early to give you numbers at this stage. Okay, but the EBITDA margin would be similar to our lubricant business or uh, any guidance, I mean, any outlook on the business? It will be similar. It would be similar. Okay. Exactly. And uh, mm -hmm. sorry. No, it will be similar. I said. Okay. Okay. And uh, are we planning to increase any stakes there in the mobility side? Um, I think difficult to say. Again, you know, we we firstly want to make sure that what we have done and invested for that gets completely embedded and executed, and uh, that is going on. And you know, both both sides of the teams are working on it. And, uh, you know, if opportunity arises, we will see in future. But at this stage, you know, I would not like to comment on anything. Okay. Okay, so that's it. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Dhawal Shah from Girik Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so two questions from my side. Uh, first is uh, the 15% of the business, which is the industrial lubrication. Uh, how is that segment growing uh, given the industrial activity has also uh, been doing well in the country and what's your outlook uh, uh, for the year? Uh, and my second question is, uh, what is the revenue model for the Castrol auto service uh, business uh, which we are developing? Uh, if you could, you know, throw some more light on that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so, so I think as far as the auto uh, industrial business is concerned, we've seen good growth in uh, in this quarter, and with the manufacturing activity uh, picking up, with government's focus on uh, making India manufacturing a hub, uh, we see uh, industrial as a good growth uh, opportunity, and hopefully we'll see, uh, continue seeing growth in the second half of this year also. And the uh, uh, Castrol Auto Service, I think, in response to one of the earlier questions, I think we get. Uh, uh, good uh, sales from uh, lubricants in these uh, uh, workshops where, which are branded Castrol because they primarily use Castrol products because they have uh, uh, they have trust in Castrol and they have uh, uh, they're able to kind of give good offerings to consumers. So, so primarily the source of revenue is better better lubricant sales uh, through uh, through these networks. That's that's the primary focus and. Uh, 
we also are entering into partnerships with people like mahindra insurance brokers as i said which help drive demand into these workshops uh, and increase traffic in these workshops okay so any uh, after sales service they do for the car uh, so that any 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 that any of that revenue will not come to us like the car service no, that's workshop revenue basically we equip uh, the workshops to provide better services to consumers using cash flow lubricants that that's the focus here okay and if you can quantify on the volume growth on the industrial side like overall we had a 5% volume growth year over year but uh, uh, the industrial volume growth separately if you can so, so i think uh, this quarter uh, the volume growth is in the range of about uh, 9 to 11% uh, without being very specific so but that's the broad range uh, okay for the quarter okay okay yeah. okay great thank you very much thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen this is to bring to your notice that the call will conclude in the next 5 minutes We'll take our next question from the line of Harsh Maru from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chitty. Actually, my question just got answered, so thank you so much. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Mohit Mehra from Guardian Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. I just wanted to ask how the progress is happening for our partnership with this. uh gobp petrol pumps yeah i think uh, uh we uh, that is progressing well i i think gobp uh, uh they're opening new outlets and i we have a commercial supply agreement respecting competition law and respecting uh, all the regulatory compliances uh, we have a lubricant supply position uh, i i think last year uh, given the pricing situation it was a, 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 a slightly subdued but we uh, we uh, back to seeing good traction in those uh, fuel ports and i think as they add more outlets we will continue uh, seeing growth in the lubricant supply position uh, with these outlets so how many outlets do we have because earlier i think we were disclosing this number but now we have stopped disclosing yeah i think it's for i i think that question will be better answered by gobp basically uh, we wouldn't like to kind of share any number as far as that is concerned because that's not no no, no i'm not talking about the number of gobp petrol pumps i'm talking about the number of outlets at which we are distributing cash flow so we supply to all the gobp outlets and uh, i think we have about uh, uh we have uh, also another offering i think that maybe uh, is what you're referring to is we have these express uh, oil service uh, kiosk on gobp side uh, we mm-hmm. have about 40 of those right now and we'll continue expanding on those as, uh, as the outlets grow but lubricant supply is to add uh, lubricant supply is on all the gobp outlets got it got it okay and this uh, the mahindra partnership that will not directly benefit us right it is just something that an added advantage for our partners right absolutely right uh, so uh, it is for the advantage of the workshops and uh, this is something that castrol has brought as a part of the offer to these workshops okay okay got it thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen we are at time this brings us to an end of the call on behalf of Castrol India Limited i thank you all for joining this call you may now disconnect your lines wish you a good day ahead yeah thank you everyone thank you